This is a video that's going to go over how to figure out if something is heterozygous, what the genotype is, and what the phenotype is, and how to set up a Punnett square. So when you're looking at number one, it is asking you if all of these options are heterozygous or homozygous based on the letters you see. So the prefix homo means same, and the prefix hetero means different. So that is how you're going to tell these apart. So if you see two letters that are the same, we know that it's homozygous. If you see two letters that are different, we know that it's heterozygous. So you can continue those from there. It's also going to ask you about phenotypes and genotypes. So genotypes, again, are when we look at the genes. And then phenotypes are what it is actually going to look like. So when you are looking at this, if it has the genotype listed, like this YY, we know that is going to look like yellow because yellow is dominant. If yellow is dominant, then little y, little y is going to be blue because it doesn't have that dominant gene there to cover it up. And then if you have something that's heterozygous, since it has that dominant gene, it is still going to be yellow. Moving on, doing the opposite, so finding the genotype from the phenotype means that if something is tall, and we know the letters we're using are capital T and lowercase t, if it has that dominant trait, that means it's going to have both options, either heterozygous or homozygous, for that tall um, head, or the short head is recessive, so you'll have two little teams. We're going to do one example of a Punnett square. So in this example, it says that SpongeBob is heterozygous for his square shape, but Sponge Susie is round. And we know that um, since it's heterozygous, that means there's one dominant trait. So we know that at least one of SpongeBob's letters is capital. And since he's heterozygous, that means they're not the same. So then he also has a lowercase s. Sponge Susie is round, not square, so that means she has two lowercase s's. So when we cross those, you are going to get this as your result. And then it's just going to ask you to at first list them. You had two options in your results. And then it's going to ask you about probability. So when you find the probability, the easiest way to do that is to count the squares. So it says, what are the chances of a child with a square shape? So we know that SpongeBob had the dominant gene, which means that dominant gene shows for square. So if we look at this, we have two options for square shape. You have one, two, three, four total boxes. So we have two out of four, or 50%. Same thing as when you make change, right? Two quarters out of four quarters is 50 cents. For the round shape, that we're looking for little s, little s, that recessive trait. So we have two squares here that show that. So same thing, two out of four for 50%.